Welcome to the Thoroughly Wrong Project with Lalo and Bob. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. Let's jump right into that weekly dose of things you can disagree with. Take it away, guys. All right. Good morning and welcome to the Thoroughly Wrong Project. Man, uh, we've been off for a while. <laughs> I haven't. I mean, there's a holiday in there, so I think that's Yeah, fair. yeah. There's a holiday in there, and there's a there's a, a a mind shift in there for me. So we're doing all right. How you been, man? Pretty good. Yeah. How's school? Yeah. Um, it's good. It's like I think these are like this is probably like the hardest time, I guess, because it's getting close to like finals, and yeah, I feel like all the classes like after spring break they're very like rushed. Like, yeah, oh, shit, we got like three or four weeks left. Like here's all this stuff that's due. <laughs> everything amps up a little bit that's yeah cool. but um uh, if anything the hardest part this last few weeks has been um for next semester i have to like to be able to register for my classes i have to submit all like my vaccine records from like elementary school <laughs> oh okay Here. so like all those like tdap and like mmr vaccines and stuff that yeah all the kids take <laughs> Which is like, yeah, I think it's dumb because it makes no sense. Because, I mean, I graduated from high school, so to go to high school in California, yeah, those should already be, you know, inputted. Well, um, but if you look at it like this, not everybody went to high school here in California, and not every state has. Yeah, but vaccine. they can like determine that. They could be like, "Oh, you're from out of state. You have to do this." Yeah, but wouldn't it be not easier like just to make everybody say everybody turn in their records? Well, it's, it might be easier for them, but it's not easier <laughs> for us because these are like minimum 18-year-olds trying to track down their vaccines when they were like five years old. Yeah. So. Well, believe it or not, in my file cabinet, I have the those 50, vaccines. yeah, the 50-year-old fucking stained old piece of paper with the, my vaccines <laughs> on it. Well, there, there's, I had all of them except for one. Um, and like, that's the one that's holding up my my registration status yeah which one is it it's the varicella like the chicken pox thing oh okay and um i had chicken pox as a little kid so i said that and they were like oh well if you had chicken pox then um you need to prove that you had chicken pox <laughs> so i need a i needed i literally had like a blood test like two days ago yeah to like test my antibodies and I just got the results back yesterday. So I submitted them finally right before we got on this morning. It's really too bad you don't have a chicken pox scar on your dick and you could have just pulled it out and said, here, <laughs> see, I had it, fuckers. <laughs> and Because I, I don't ever remember getting chicken pox, but I remember my mom telling me that I got chicken pox. And when I took the blood test, like after I was finished, it was funny because I called my mom and I was like, are you sure I had chicken pox? Because I just took this blood test, and if it comes out negative, I'm going to be pissed because then I'm, I'm going to have to take some vaccines, you know? And she's like, no, like, I'm sure you got chicken pox. And, well, yeah, sure enough, it was, it was, like, super positive. Like, my antibodies are, like, super high. Isn't it so, odd that we have to we have to go through all these, uh, jump through all these hoops in order to, you know, be – I want to be I want to be a part of a of a culture of my society that can help other people. So I want to go to college and I want to you know, I want to be a good person and pay my taxes and everything. It's like, well, here's a list of fucking shit you have to do before you do that. And and I think that's why a lot of people don't succeed, man, because it's not just the vaccines. It's it's all a slew of other things. Espe you know, especially now, like the you got to get the ID with the bear with the star on its butt, and you know all that shit. <laughs> and do you know no what I had ID. to go through to get that federal ID? My name's been changed when I was a child. So if you think trying to pull up fucking vaccine records is hard, try pulling up you know adoption records. <laughs> I had no, I had no access to that as a child, and so I had to call West Virginia. I had to call Arizona. And then I would have been married three times. Do you call so, for that? Like, do what? What, depar what department do you call? Um, there's a there's a department of adoption records in Arizona. 
Oh, and yeah. then you call the courthouse in West Virginia for your uh, wherever you got married, wherever you got divorced, where you were born, where you know your name was changed. And then even even after I proved that, they still wanted another court record to verify that my name had been changed. So I had to go back to Arizona to Pima County, and it it, it just seems like this thing's like I am who I am. You know, don't. I've been here for 56 years. You, you got tons of fucking records on me. And all of a sudden it's on the burden of proof is on me to prove who I am. I've been paying taxes <laughs> to the IRS and they didn't fucking question who I was then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think just like, as more time goes on systems like that, just naturally get more complicated. Yeah. Well, especially with what's going on in the world. I mean, you know, I was thinking, dude, I was thinking about what we were going to talk about or what I was going to talk about. And and I was looking at, at history and we had, you know, like the Industrial Revolution and that the Industrial Revolution brought about this, you know, there was no work laws and children were working and and the industrial complex came to being under the sweat and blood of the workers. And then there was like a, there was like an awakening of the workers and unions popped up and and we changed we had a, a revolution of thought about how how we wanted to be treated and so that changed and we we get the 40 hour work week we get the weekend and the unions gave us all these things so the industrial the industrial revolution dies or not dies but it it changes from labor to this Amazon way of thinking, you know, Amazon and, and corporate buying and, and all this power. And now we're under this different kind of thumb. And I think, dude, that we need another revolution, but like a revolution of thought, not not like we did before. You know what well, I mean? I think, that's, I think that's what it was back then, too. Um, you know, like, because to transition from... Because, I mean, if you think about it before, you know, the whole, like, Henry Ford, like, 40-hour work week and, you know, minimum wage and, you know, children shouldn't work. Like, before all that, it was it was like that for a long time, you know? Yeah. Like, there was, you know, child labor. There was, you know, yeah. no little to no pay, like, for centuries. So, I think when, you know, people started, because, I mean, unions were really big back then, you know? Yeah. When people started like banding together and like, hey, you know, this this these are our demands, this is what we want. Like I I think that took a lot of like you said, change of thought, um, to like kind of meet what people wanted, you know? Yeah. And I think now we're kind of in that same predicament, just you know, I think it's it was like not a stopgap, but like it was like a good first step, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we saw the the benefits of, you know, children not working, you know, they could go to school, they could get an education, the 40 hour work week, like productivity like went up. But now we kind of realized that, OK, well, our productivity went up, but our pay didn't, you know. Right. And now we're at this point where it's like, you know, people once again, they're kind of in that same situation where they're just struggling like to survive, you know, obviously it's not the exact same, you know. Right. Um, yeah, like we're not losing. Them. We're not losing fingers at work now, and no one gives right. a shit. Right, but it's still like that sentiment's still there, you know, where there needs to be some sort of like change. Um, well, do you think this what they call this woke culture is is kind of a a false awakening? No, I think what people call woke culture is very like. Like, when you ask people, like, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean by woke? A lot of times it's, like, very, it, there are things that's very, like, that should be normal, you know? Like, oh, what do you call woke? Like, oh, they're putting all these, like, you know, uh, like, have you seen the new Batman movie? No, not yet. Well, they call that movie, like, a woke movie because, like, all the black people in the movie are, like, good people. And like most of, or if not like all the bad people in the movie are white. 
and people take that and they're like oh this movie's woke yeah you know? and it's like how is that woke like it's it's gone from like people just see any like anything that's like deviant from the norm and they call it like woke like yeah. oh there's a gay character in this movie oh this this show's woke that's why this said movie's it. woke isn't isn't that kind of a false awakening like that isn't really being awake that that's that's noticing things that are uh, and i'm not saying unimportant at all i'm not saying that at all because uh, racial equality uh trans rights all those all those things are really fucking important because in order in order for us to to reach a, a diverse ethical fair mm -hmm. you know culture all we need to we need to see that but the, you know like you said oh there's a gay character in it that's a woke movie no we need to wake up really wake up because there's some things happening in our culture that are completely wrong and we don't even see it happening you know what i mean yeah i think this whole like what they call like the culture war is just people like i mean the way i see it, it's just like people not being accepting or like mm -hmm. refusing to be you know accepting right um because like i said any like deviation from like what they're so used to is instantly like Oh, you're just like some sort of like, you know, liberal, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that's just normal life. Like, not everybody has to be straight, you know? Right. And well, not, I not think... everybody actually is straight. So it's like, like, gay people aren't like just some things that like people throw in movies and TV shows. Just... Exactly. Exactly. That's, like, that's what... real life. <laughs> yeah. And, and, oh, look, a, a gay character in a movie. That's really woke. <laughs> no, no. That's not woke. That's that's fooling you into thinking it is. Because there's still no, there's still no ex world or not culture-wide acceptance of gay people. And I, you know what? I really don't think there needs to be a culture-wide acceptance of every deviation from what we consider the norm. Not not everybody needs to accept everything, dude. That's That's impossible. That that's a well, pipe dream I, like I don't, but we need to respect each other yeah and i think it's i always tell people that like your support or non-support of something like you know that's fine like you cannot support something you can right. believe that like you know in your traditional marriage or whatever but Ba your feelings shouldn't have any impact on like other people's lives you know right like you know gay people getting married doesn't affect you at all so exactly. you shouldn't be able to affect their ability to get married well if you don't want to support it okay that's fine like yeah no one cares but when you're you know out there like lobbying and you know voting for people that you know want to ban gay marriage or you know all these other things that's when it gets like, that's when it becomes an issue. But we're such, you know, we're such binary creatures, man, human beings. It's like up, down, left, right, you know, and, and I think we, we look at everything by judging it from its opposite. So in order to not support something, we have to oppose it. It, it seems that the oddest thing, it's like, I don't, I don't agree with gay marriage. So therefore I need to run my fucking mouth about it. And I, I agree with that, like very much the whole like binary thing. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I mean, like once you really like think about it, it's very, it's very silly that we ever thought of like, um, like sexuality and, uh, like things like gender as binary. I yeah. mean, I get why it was like, why we created a binary, but if you were like really stop to think about it, like we're not so like bound by those binary like rules that we think we are right um, like i always uh give people like an example or like my friends and stuff like that like um like you could show them like a like a trans woman 
like I'll just show them a picture and be like, are you attracted to this person? And be like, oh yeah, like she's hot. And I was like, oh, this is a trans woman. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, she's not hot. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> but five seconds ago you said she was hot. So like your your instinct was to be like was to say, oh, I'm attracted to this person, you know? Yeah. Only when you find out more about them, um, do you like in your mind convince yourself like, no, I cannot be attracted to this person because they're trans. Right. Right. So, it's like I made up my mind about what I'm going to be attracted to. And then something comes along that's different from that. And all of a sudden I'm conflicted. Right. And it's like, they didn't change. Like the person themselves didn't change from, you know, when you were attracted to them to when you weren't right. Like nothing about them changed. The only thing that changed was your perception. <laughs> and that's what I tell people. Like, that's what sexuality is. That's what gender is. It's perception. It's what, what? we deem it to be. It's what we think it is. Right. It's a personal choice. And, and that, you know, when we make up these, we have these personal moral values, and then we try to impose that shit on other people. We forgot the very first word of that, personal moral values. These are my moral values, and I, I don't have to tell you how I think. It doesn't matter how I think about shit like that. It's funny, my wife... <laughs> My wife and I were talking yesterday. We we know this person that that, that works at a, a store, and we couldn't decide whether the person was male or female. But both we're both attracted to her, <laughs> or him. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it, it got me to thinking. It's like that. Isn't that the beauty of diversity? And you, you could be attracted to anyone you want to be attracted to. But if I was to tell that to, say, uh, a staunch Christian, you know, first of all, I'm not allowed to be attracted to anybody outside of my marriage. Second of all, even if I am, I'm not allowed to talk about it. And thirdly, if I'm not sure if it's male or female, then I can't be attracted to it at all until that decision is made. It, it's all just this crazy people telling us how to think. And they shouldn't. And I shouldn't tell you how to think, and you shouldn't tell me. We should all just be getting along, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the best thing we can do is, like, just, I guess, like, inform each other, like, teach each other. Like like you said, like, we shouldn't tell each other what to think, but I think we're able to, like, express our opinions and then kind of let people decide, Yeah, you know, which route they want to follow. Or, but you I know, think it's important to give them like the broad scope of of opinions because if you kind of you know that because that's how like that's kind of how you create like bigotry you know yeah you're just drilled like this one thing into your mind you know by your family by your church by your friends whatever so when you like get out of that when you leave that setting you know where you're comfortable and you kind of go about life living like that and people people are gonna look at you funny you know yeah yeah i i think um that that's i, I don't know how, how to express this right but if you and i have the same moral values and the same interests and everything that makes us compatible and then we can be we you know there's levels of friendship like levels of everything else and sometimes you're 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 an acquaintance and you have things in common and sometimes you're best friends and sometimes you're lovers and, and it just goes on and on. But then you have groups of people who think alike and somehow there is this belief system that this group, this is my group and this is what we think, we're against you. And we don't have to do that at all, dude. We could just say, this is my group, you know, if you want to join us, if you want to engage in conversation or debate even. But there seems to be this angry, sign-waving, finger-pointing, you're fucking wrong and I'm fucking right. And it doesn't, it, it seems to be meaningless, Lalo, that once you get past a certain point and it turns to anger or violence or negative emotion, we we need to stop right there and say, you know, what are we doing? 
because because I think I'm right and I think you're wrong, I, I need to belittle you. I don't think so. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, it 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 should stop at, you know, this is what, what I believe and Yeah. I'm not gonna try to impose this on you. Like if you wanna join me, that's fine, but I shouldn't like you shouldn't be able to impose other people's ability to like disagree with you. Right. And like act on that disagreement, you know? Right. And and obviously there's like limits to that. Right. Um but I think for the most part people can agree that's very like um it's very like fair, you know? Yeah. I I agree. It's like I said there are limits when when people start getting hurt. That's where we need to you know, I, I need to step in and stop you from hurting another person. I think when people stop getting hurt and when people's freedoms start getting altered. Yeah. Like if you can do something, whatever that something is, someone else that disagrees with you should also be able to do that thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, like we should be able to debate what's going on and then make a decision based on that debate and and somehow come to the conclusion that okay, we need we need to remove this barrier for that person and then both of us need to shut up. And yeah. but see there's a, there's those things again, dude, the systems of fucking control. Why <laughs> You know what I mean? We, we now we're suddenly talking about you and I are having a debate about someone else and their freedom. It, shouldn't they be able to speak up and say, you know? And I don't know. It gets it gets super fucking complicated, and I think that's where we're all fooled, and and real wokeness. And I hate that fucking word anymore because it's been so bastardized. It's been so warped and twisted. It's like, I'm woke. It's like, no, man, real, real woke is you see things like you read the news and you see things like Amazon is going to in, install this social private social media thing within Amazon. And they have 40 words that they're going to ban that you can't use. And suddenly you start to see all these systems of control that are much, much deeper and go much further than just a, a gay person in a movie or uh, all the white people are, are evil and all the black people are good. There seems to be this underlying co corporate control of us and we have it at we have it at our work, and, I, and I'll you know I'll take the hit, dude. Uh, right now, that uh, system we have, where they our training system, where we get points and we can award stars and all that shit. <laughs> that's just yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It's it's funny when you look at it, but it's happening. It happens to us all the time where we're brought into these systems, and you know. We're like trained bears riding a fucking bicycle around a, a circus. And what do we do with that? And how do we wake up from our stupor that we are in, that we are so controlled and so distracted by things that don't matter? You know, how do we wake up from that? How how do we stop that? And isn't that what we were talking about at the beginning of this? when When we had no unions... And we woke up and we organized and we fought back. And now we can't fight back. We can't organize because we're so polarized. I think there's, I mean, I personally think there's kind of room for, for both. Um, Cause I mean, like, I mean, it, and like, tell me, if I'm like trying to miss like misinterpreting what you're saying, but like, you know, things like, you know, like representation and like activism and, you know, trans rights, gay rights, all that stuff. Like it's, it's great to like support it, you know, and be behind it. Yeah. 
when you're like not part of that group but i think when you are you know in those communities it's kind of it's a lot bigger deal to you personally you know yeah i agree um so i i understand and i'm completely fine with people like being very passionate about things like that but i don't i never want to like criticize them like i never i i would never say like oh like you're you're worrying about the wrong things like amazon's taking over don't worry about if you could use the bathroom or not right because i don't think that really helps the cause um because i think they're both important and i mean different things are important differently for different people you know right um so i i wouldn't say like things that don't matter you know because i i think they really do matter a lot there's like social um like like you said there's like corporate takeover i also think there's like social takeover Mm -hmm. and i think they could both be like taken on at the same time Uh, okay and i I would say talking about a multiple front war here is what we're talking about and yeah and i would say that I mean, people that support one of those usually tend to support the other for the most part, not hundred percent, but for the most part, like if you talk to them about, you know, if you go to like any, like, uh, like gay pride movement and you try to talk about like Amazon taking over, they'll be like, oh yeah, like that too, you know? Yeah. Okay. But I don't think, I don't think it's fair to like try to, I don't know, detract from like their movement or their like activism to be like like you're over here worrying about this like this is what's really going on you know yeah that's I, probably I, just as important to them yeah it, I misspoke. like i said it affects them personally i'm i misspoke i you're right i, I just see think i see the co- the cause you know when you when you start when you see a problem and you go okay this problem is caused by these two things but oh my god these two things are caused by these four things and oh my god and then you start digging deeper and deeper the the end result or where you started the end result problem of you know i i don't agree with uh gay marriage comes from uh this systemic built upon thing that's coming from something that has nothing to do with gay marriage and if we could go back and, and remove that obstacle, then the whole house cards would fall. But we got to find that. And it and you're right. You We do need to fight it on, on that side. But re, I think real wokeness is an ability to say, okay, not, not supporting gay marriage is a problem, but let's look at this political system, this political and this... Uh, religious system that built this and how are we going to fucking dismantle that because even even if we can get people to to support gay marriage we we have to figure out how to dismantle this other side it's not going to fall because it keeps shifting you know what i mean yeah yeah like we think that there's this bipartisan political thing and we think that there's Chris and it goes so fucking deep and so deep into our psyche that we've been manipulated since birth to not support gay marriage. And where did that come from? So that's what, that's what I'm talking about. I, and, and I do apologize uh, because people that are fighting for gay rights, I, I, I support them and people that are fighting for rights in the workplace and against Amazon and, taking a piss in a bottle. I, I support all that. But at the same time, dude, I see there's a huge issue with the way we think at this core. The core of American values is so corrupt now. And it it branches out into everything and everything, everything and everyone that's affiliated with it. Yeah. And I think, like you said, it's, I think it, those like American values is kind of how we, got here in the first place Mm -hmm. um and i think and i mean i've thought about this too before like 
even if you go back to like the birth of the United States, like how it became to be, it was a very like, and I mean, now that I think about it, like a lot of countries were formed in this way, you know, like, you know, they were part of another country that was right. like a tyrant to them. And right. they wanted to like break away, you know, and become independent. So we kind of, we fought for our freedom, you know? And I think that like, that way of becoming independent kind of like snowballed into like our attitude towards the world or just like how, how things should be. Like if you want something, you got to like fight for it and take it. Right. And I don't know, it, it's very, it's like a very aggressive like attitude. And I mean, it kind of reflects on us today. Like we're a very aggressive country when it comes to like the rest of the world and yeah. how the rest of the world sees us. And that's one of the like reasons I've always, I think at some point I want to like go to another country and kind of mainly like a, like Scandinavian country. Yeah. Cause I think they're just so like similar, but different at the same time. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to Finland ne next summer, so. You're right, and it's like, like they they have like super high taxes, uh -huh. and it's like, they don't care, like they really don't <laughs> care, and it people like look at that, like you tell them that, and they're like, oh, because they're just like, controlled by the government and like they're sheep, blah blah, but if you talk to people over there, and I've seen like interviews and, you know, people going like journalists going to like just your average like danish home and they talk about these things and you know people say like we don't see the government as some sort of like controlling like figure you know like to them the government like they are the government and the government like protects them and provides for them and over here when you think of about the government like providing for you it's like or you're just like a lazy like sack of shit. Yeah, you know. You just want some. You just want a handout. <laughs> but over there, like you know, college is free. Uh, you know, they get all this like maternity leave, paternity leave. Yeah. You know, healthcare is free over there, and it's like that's. I mean, in my opinion, I think government should function more in that capacity, and I will say that I I think part of the reason why they're so like amicable towards their government is because I think their government like does right by them. And I don't think we have that here. We have that resentment towards government. Cause you know, you know, I fucking paid so much in taxes and there's still that fucking pothole on the street, you know, mm -hmm. exactly. and just like little things like that, you know, we have resentment towards our government because it's not serving us. And that's the point of a government is to serve you like the people and you know and then there's that like you were talking about you're absolutely right we don't trust them because they don't treat us right and then it's set up to where we we think like that we that's just the norm we don't trust the government it's normal to not trust the government and in like in scandinavian countries it's normal to trust the government because well they they i can go to any hospital and when it's time to go to college, I can choose to go to college. And it, all those things, uh, their culture is, is much calmer. And I think um, you, never, you never hear about Finland invading anyone. They, they're not interested in that. They're not interested in controlling outside Finland. And that that's the beauty. That's the thing that I think that we miss here. In the United States, we're 350 million people under one centralized government. And I think if it was cut down into pockets of taking care, states taking care of themselves, counties taking care of themselves, and it worked its way up. But we're, we're just in this giant fucking machine that we can't even begin to understand how it works. And the only thing they tell us is, here's some corruption and the media just feeds this idea that we are, we need to be angry all the fucking time. 
Yeah, and to me, honestly, I think like the opposite of of kind of what you just said, where to me, I think the way towards fixing it would be because like what you mentioned is a very like, it's almost like libertarian, you know, Mm -hmm. like a libertarian point of view, which like let counties, like let small governments like control themselves and work our way up from that. Yeah. But I think in the current state that we're in, that's very, like, it's not hard to do, but if you were to do that, I think you would get a very, like, factioned United States, even more than it is now. Because if you let a place like Mississippi or, like, Alabama, like, decide its own laws, um, I think you'd get a very, like, bigoted and, like, um, like unjust state you know yeah it's already it's already happened right but i mean even them like states still have like federal laws that they must follow you know Mm -hmm. so i think if you start from the bottom down you kind of like in those in those sorts of places you know in the west virginias and the mississippis and the in the georgias like you'll get like some fucked up laws you know whereas (laughs) if you start from the top down it's kind of because i mean at the end of the day it's still one country it's like this blanket that covers everybody you know it's like all the states have to follow this law like oh you made you know gay marriage like federally legal okay so that means every single state has to follow it not just you know whatever states because you know I, i hear that argument a lot like you know marriage should be just should just left be left to the states and a lot of republicans like say that to right. try to like sound neutral like do you if you tell them like oh do you support gay marriage they'll be like uh, i think marriage should be left up to the states because that's really like a non-answer but because they don't want to just say like they don't want to flat out just say no you know right they don't want they don't want to be they want to antagonize right so by saying that they know like there's a lot of states in the south and then like the middle of the country that are that would like outlaw that you know (laughs) and it's like okay well you let the states decide but is that really the right thing to do like was their decision moral was it right was it just and the answer to me is no yeah that's an issue like you if you're married in fucking new york and you go to louisiana you move to louisiana for your job or something and suddenly you're not married that's that's a fucking problem right and that's what i mean like we're still one country like regardless of where you travel to like your laws should be uniform you know at least when it comes to like big things like that obviously there's like smaller like differences you know you know, you know, like the speed limit here is different than it is in like Texas or whatever. <laughs> you can't but, turn right on red in certain states, and yeah, <laughs> right. So but like, that still the- creates confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm from Louisiana. I can turn right on red. Well, you ain't Louisiana, boy. <laughs> Damn it. Right. So it's like I think there's like the role of federal government, ideally, and I'm not saying like right now, but I'm saying like ideally, if it was done correctly would kind of like put this blanket of like basic rights and what we're allowed to do like equally over everybody in the United States, you know? Yeah. And then the States can do things like, you know, their infrastructure, <laughs> like their traffic laws or shit like that. That doesn't really matter. Well, then, then we have, you know, we have this issue. I, let me say, I, I reiterate, we need a revolution of thought here. Seriously. We need to wake the fuck up for real. We need to be a woke culture for real. And st- instead of, you know, I, I think I'm going to, you, you've got people who are like, I agree with gay marriage and I'm going to fight for it. And then on the other side, you've got, I disagree with gay marriage and I'm going to fight against it. So if you if you said gay marriage is is a constitutional right 
people are not going to shut up. It's just going to go to the court system here. So that's where I say we need a revolution of thought here where when edicts come down, how do we decide whether these these things like, okay, the government says gay marriage is legal, that goes against my ethics. Say I'm a fucking uh, evangelical Christian, and all of a sudden the government is dictating my morality. How do we, how do we come to the point where, you know, it's okay to do that? Well, I don't, I wouldn't consider that dictating your morality because the government's not forcing you to do anything. Yeah, they are. Uh, if, if, uh, if they're gay not marriage is legal, to- I have to, if I own a business, I have to do business with them. If I own an apartment complex, I have to rent to them. I have, you know, this is the, these are the things that are coming down. You know, I don't agree with that. And and please, God, don't think that I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Right. But I think, I mean, like, let's say, like, you're a landlord. And um, like you said, you know, you'd have to rent to them. Right. Like, whether they're married or not, they... Like a gay couple could like let's say apply for an apartment, and whether they're married or not, um, like if you don't rent to them based on the fact that they're gay, that would be discrimination, whether they're married or not. Right. You know. So I don't think them being married would change any of that. Like any of that, you know, because. If you're discriminating on them based on, um, you know, like I said, that they're gay, you're you're already discriminating against them. You know, like I said, whether they're married or not. So them being allowed to get married doesn't really change the fact of what the outcome is. Okay, let's take that down to, let's take that down. It's been in courts now, so we can talk about it easily. I own a bakery. Gay couple comes in. I have a sign on my fucking wall that says I re- I reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Right? Then you see those signs everywhere. Management yeah. reserves the right to refuse service. So you come in and you say, I want a wedding cake and I'm excited. I'm like, excellent. I'm going to make 400 bucks here. And you say, okay, I want it to say uh, Robert and Francisco. And then suddenly I'm like, well, it, are, the, are those two males? And I don't agree with that. That's against my ethics. I'm a Christian. The Bible says you're an abomination. Therefore, I believe you're an abomination. I'm not going to serve you. There's my sign. Right, but you, that sign is very, uh, like, it's not absolute. Like, there's still, like, protected classes, you know. Right. And... um I don't, I'm not sure if sexual orientation is one of them. I think it is, but I'm not sure. But either way, like, that's like you saying, like, uh, like let's say you have that same sign up and like a black couple walks in and it's like, hey, we want a wedding cake. And it's like, well, I don't like black people, so I'm going to refuse service. Right. Like, that's the exact same scenario. I agree. But like, that's in the exact same scenario to you and I. <clears throat> but now, but like even in the eyes of the law, that's the same scenario, and I think that's what matters at the end. Okay, like they could fight it, and I know there's been like I think there was a case similar to that here in Bakersfield with like the whole wedding cake, cake was there? thing, right? And the court ruled in favor of the baker, but not for the reasons people think. Like, if you look at the decision, it wasn't, it was basically like the pros- the prosecution, like, fucked it up. Like, okay. they did something wrong. Um, and that's why the, the judge, like, ruled in their favor. It wasn't like, the judge didn't say, hey, you're right. Like, your religion triumphs, you know, their <laughs> right. marriage or whatever. That's not what the decision was at all. And people kind of, like, they just see who won and they think, oh, Exactly, right. dude. That's exactly what I'm talking about. They, nobody looks at the reason 
Nobody looks at the law. Nobody looks at the decision. They simply look at, oh, the judge ruled in favor of the baker. Fuck those married people. That's not, they're not, fuck them. They're not really married. And that's not, it's not what happened at all. So, again, I have to say we need to really fucking wake up. And by saying that, I mean we need to do what you just said. Look at the fucking decision. Look at why it was made. Not just the end result. That's awake. Yeah. So, I mean, there's... I think that's just, like, an issue we have. It's just people, like, taking things for surface value or for face value, you know? Right. Um, and then those things, like, affect your perception of, like, a lot of things. Like, overall, like big things you know yeah like you yeah. hear that like if you were to see that one article it's like oh the baker one so every time this argument comes up you're gonna be like well actually this happened here in bakersfield california and uh the judge ruled in favor of the baker so you know how are you how are you gonna argue with the judge you know or some some shit yeah, like that the law says that the baker was right well there's it's it goes much deeper than that and right. there's there's where we are fucking goldfish in a bowl, man, swimming in a circle. And it seems to be this thing of like, well, what are we supposed to care about this week? And we are besieged with so much information that it is hard to say, you know, you scan the headline and you read the first paragraph and you're like, oh, look, this baker won this case against a married couple. And then. It gives the name of the prosecutor and the name of the baker and the name of the couple and who won. And you're like, you're out of it because there's something else coming right behind that, right down the pipe. And, and so you're getting pieces of information and you're basing your woke status on these fucking pieces of information when you don't have the whole story. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's. I honestly do think it's a lot to like process for people. Yeah. I would say it's not it's not an easy thing to do to kind of like you said like change that thought process. Right. Um I mean it took me like 20 something years, you know. Yeah, it took me 50 <laughs> like 20, some so like 25 years so but I think once you like I think you have to like sit down with somebody and like talk to them and make them just like reevaluate something just even a little bit. And I think that always gets like the ball rolling for a lot of people. Yeah. And I think a lot of people also have to get past their, their pride and their like arrogance mm -hmm. of like being wrong. Yeah, we talk because, about that a lot here. About that's no, the hardest thing for a human being to do is say, "Ah, oh, fuck, I was wrong." Yeah, because I, I mean, it's one thing to admit you're wrong, but it's another thing to like admit. And I think the hardest part is admitting to yourself, like, "Hey, this whole like way of thinking that I've been doing for like my whole life might not be the best way," you know? Right. Um, I there, there's a lot of nuance to something like, like we were talking about before. There's a lot of nuance to, to things like gay marriage and it has to do with ethics and morality and Christianity and politics and, and all these things come together. And I, I think when you are screaming at another person that gay marriage is wrong and the other person is screaming that gay marriage is right. I don't think anybody's stopping to think. And and both sides need to, to stop and go, okay, we need to do a little more research here. And we really need to wake up. And, and that research doesn't need to be skewed towards what I already fucking believe. You know, that, that's... We, we need to stop and have discussions instead of so much anger. And maybe, dude, maybe if we did that and started to wake up a little bit at a time, that might, that might work. But to say, you know, my, my friends are getting married this weekend and someone says, oh, who are they? And you, and you say it's a gay couple and immediately you get cut off. 
then then there's a serious problem we have in this in this culture that we live in where well i'm a woke person i believe in gay marriage and the other side says well i'm a woke person i don't so nobody i don't think i don't think anybody that doesn't support gay marriage would ever label themselves as woke Mm. because that's kind of the label that we've given to that term woke so i don't think there's any like conservative religious person or any (laughs) person that like supports gay marriage that would be like oh yeah i'm woke well let's not say let's not say that but they believe they're fucking right and they're not yeah. going to back down from it because in, in any information that comes in, I I really respect you because how old are you, man? 28, 29? 27. 27. At 27, um, no one was listening to me because I was just stupid. <laughs> was just, I was just a stupid hillbilly, you know. I was married and had kids and I was struggling to not – I was struggling to fit into a culture that I didn't agree with. So I have a lot of respect for you, man. You, you, you're trying to wake up at this age and really wake up and really have a, a, a diverse, just thought of thinking, way of thinking about the world. I didn't have that at 27. I didn't have that until I was probably 40. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would say though that I think, like, I don't want to take all the credit, but um, I would say that a big, like, mm, what am I, I'm trying to word this, like a big reason why I think I was able to, like, wake up or whatever, you know, I think a lot of it also has to do with, like, the times that we're in. Like, I can't imagine being able to, like, think like be able to like publicly express yourself like this yeah like you know 40 50 years ago like you just get like berated you know yeah like left and right um so i think like the times that we're in make it a lot easier for people to think about the world well give your give yourself some credit man because we had in the 60s we had the sexual revolution in the 70s we had you know gay rights came alive we've had we've had this underlying culture of of um accept come trying to accept or make people other people accept uh different ways of thinking we've had it for in america for the last 50 years i think the sentiment has always been there like i'm a thousand percent sure there was gay people like 700 years ago, you know, <laughs> like that, that was never like, no, sir. Thing. That only happened in the 1990s, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, like you said, there's been like, it's almost like there's been uh, like stepping stones, you know, Yeah. for like various issues, you know, there's civil rights in the sixties. I think there was like um, Stonewall was in the seventies, I think seventies or eighties. Mm-hmm. And like Stonewall was like a big thing, you know, for, for the, uh, like gay movement right um so it's like there's been like events and like people that have like helped it progress like in sometimes in like very big like chunks you know right in very big leaps um so i think those are like really the like the true like you know it like imagine being like publicly like and outwardly, like in support of gay people in like the 30s or the 40s, like you get beat up every day, you know? Yeah, every single day, and maybe so beat to like, death and left in a river somewhere. Right. So, I mean, if you ask me, like, are you were you like are you willing to do that? Like, it, that's a very big reason to not do something, you know? <laughs> and then there's there was yeah. people that still did it regardless. Yeah. Uh, so you're. I, I, I give myself some credit too. I, a lot of people my age are still just stuck in that 1970s, 1980s thing, and I, 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 I got to move up. I, I got to, I got to wake up as the movement 
came, you know, when I was young, uh, gay people weren't accepted and I didn't accept them. That wasn't something I did. I, I didn't know how. I wasn't taught that that was right. I was taught that it was wrong. So I have come a long way, but I think that, you know, in the 60s, I was born and then the 70s came along in the 80s and I began to I began to change a little bit. And then my children were raised in a culture of acceptance where I was like, you know, the, it, diverse culture is a good thing, guys. It's what I told them, you know, black, white, Chinese, doesn't matter. And gay, don't worry about it. It's not your issue. If Unless you are gay, then that's that's your issue. So things change so Think, there, there are no such thing as dramatic changes unless there's like the French Revolution where you just cut the head off the king and, okay, <laughs> things are different now. So these moral issues that we have are changing slowly. You know, women's rights, gay rights, uh, um, African-American rights, and it, we are changing. And it's it's good to see. And I think I'm just... <sighs> I want to see it change faster. And I'm sure that gay people want to see it change a whole hell of a lot faster than I want to see it change. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the next generation will grow up with gay people being married and more it, it'll change. And then people like <laughs> my dad and, and that generation will die off. And we'll look at that <laughs> as like, we'll look at that as like slavery. That was a way of thinking then. We don't think like that anymore. Well, I mean, I feel like if you go to some places of the country, they they might disagree with you. What's that? Attached. What do you mean? Like, I mean, it, in some places, like it's still very like in like rural, some like rural parts of states. You uh, go and like they're still stuck in like. 1800s yeah. they're yeah. still beating up people for being gay i i agree but those those pockets will become more and more isolated and hopefully die off hopefully yeah but then we're fighting against diversity again right <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to not like gay people no it's not it you know what how do we decide these things and that that's the there's the question of of wokeness again how do we wake the fuck up for real and stop mm -hmm. judging each other this there's such injustice and stupidity and rudeness and harassment bullying you know just it never fucking ends never yeah, ends to me it always it's always about like um like freedom you know you can disagree all you want, but once you start like altering people's freedom, mm -hmm. that's where the problem comes in, you know. <laughs> and that's what's going on. Like that's what that's how we. Uh, well, that's how things kind of seem to work right now. If you like let everything... people get married to whoever they want to get married to, next next generation will be marrying horses. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people like, okay, and. Like what? <laughs> are you gonna marry a horse? No. Okay, then why do you care? <laughs> so wedding cakes with a horse and a and a guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I really wouldn't care. That's the thing. I think that I bet that religious like baker wouldn't mind that one. <laughs> but all of a sudden it's like two guys or two girls and all hell breaks loose. No, it's just the two guys. <laughs> it, we just need to um there there it is. I think people like you and people like me, Lalo, I think that we are truly awake. And and I don't mean that we're fucking enlightened and we're gurus or you know, any of that shit. I just mean we're truly awake and we see the broader issues of freedom. And we see the broader issues of of autonomy. And, you know, you're allowed to do what you really want to do. And, and the guidelines are not as stringent as everybody thinks that 
they are. They should be much broader. You know what I mean? You should yeah. be able to do. You should be able to fuck whoever you want to fuck. And that, that's just basically, you know, not a child. Not you know, <laughs> there. There's where you stop. But if you want to, if you want uh, to marry two people at the same time, fucking do it. You know, nobody's. How does that hurt our culture if? three people want to get married or a guy wants to marry a guy or a girl wants to marry a girl or a dude wants to marry a fucking horse. How does that tear us down? And, and, and suddenly we're a weaker nation because that guy married a horse. That's fucking stupid. He's not hurting anybody. He's going out to the barn and fucking his horse and coming back inside. You know, that doesn't hurt. He's paying his taxes. He's going to work. He's doing his thing. He's happy. He loves his horse. And there you go. <laughs> I love you, man. You're all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I never like really advocate for like bestiality. I just use it as a right, <laughs> right, a extreme example. It's an extreme example, but it's still even in that extreme example does not hurt our society. You know, there'd be more there'd be more commercials on television about saddles. That's that's it. That's what would happen. <laughs> you know, corporations would be like, hmm, how can we sell fucking something to the guy married to the horse? That's yeah, all that would happen. One of the <clears throat> people have like irrational fears when it comes to like progress. Right. Cause they're always like you know, pretty soon everybody's going to, like, be gay or something, you know? And <laughs> oh, it's my. Some, like, contagious yeah. disease. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, that's not how, how it works. Like, if Oh, my God. Now, what like, if things man, change? <laughs> yeah. So, it's, like, people, like, it's very irrational, like, fears. And, I mean, I get it. People are, like, changes is a scary thing or it can be, but you kind of have to go with it or like get left behind, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, um, a lot of people get left behind, <laughs> but they're still paying Don't, taxes. Right. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. all the things people will like advocate for, like it's for them. It's not for you. Like no one's going to make you divorce your wife and, make you like marry some guy like that's not right yeah and i always say like it's okay to have like discussions and debates and you know political arguments but <clears throat> on certain issues i don't think there is a debate like you know on on issues that are about people's rights like there's to me there's no debate like there's no Okay, like, well, you support gay marriage. You don't. Like, that's not an argument to me. To me, that's somebody that's for freedom and somebody that's against freedom. And I'm always going to go with the person that's for freedom. Yeah, I. that's pretty profound right there. I never thought Cause of it that you're, way. Because one side is, like, you know, they're for freedom and for equality, and the other side is, like, against that. But that's that side is usually the 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 party that's always for like for like freedom, you know, in America and all this. But when it's like freedoms that they don't agree with, it's all of a sudden it's it's an issue, you know. Yeah. It's like, oh, Elon Musk should buy Twitter, you know, bring back our freedom of speech. Yeah. It's like, was he was he uh, advocating for freedom of speech when he like fired all those people trying to unionize at Tesla? Right. Was that freedom of speech, you know, advocacy? So well, it's like there's a, there's too much information right there. We're we're compartmentalizing things and looking at just the surface of things. And he wants to give us freedom, and and he's not an advocate for freedom at all. He's a he's a capitalist, and uh, and you know he's fucking on television defending billionaires the other day, and it's just. It's sick, man, the way we have come to this conclusion that it's okay. Capitalism is okay, and it controls so much. And we talked about even 
capitalism is is morality and et it's ethics and christianity and i can i'm a baker and i can decide to do what the fuck i want to do and who whose freedoms i can take and musk is like i i can decide what i want to buy and whose freedoms i can take so we need to we need to wake up lalo we really do to the to the larger picture and so and support support the war on on all the fronts that we've talked about today on gay marriage and gay rights and rights for uh, brown people and white people and Chinese people. We need to support all those. And at the same time, we need warriors to stand up and say, I support all that, but here's the issues that are, that are deeper. And you can fight your war against the people who are against gay marriage. You can fight that to the death, I, but you need to say, we need to change at a at a deeper level. We need to change at a psychological level where we accept people more. And instead of imposing our morality, we need to understand that personal morality is just that. I think this, and it does affect my life, but I'm not going to let it affect your life. If you want to get married to your 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 man, your woman, whatever, do it. I don't agree with it, but... I agree that you should have that choice, right? Yeah. Not even that choice, but like that freedom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You should have that freedom to make that decision. And it shouldn't be this church that this bakery will do for you. And this one won't. And it's, we need um, to accept the diversity at, at a level that's almost impossible for us but if we keep fighting as long as we don't give up right yeah and i mean there there's like forces <laughs> trying to make you like give up you know daily so yeah <laughs> every day at work in the store on the street on the radio on the television constantly and even our jobs if you if you work for somebody like Amazon, they're trying to control you in ways that crazy. So form unions, join your fucking union if you are if it's available to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Join the union. Make you know, make your voice heard. That's what people think. People think, well, I gotta give the union nine dollars a week. Mm-hmm. You should, you know. You really should, because when things go wrong, that nine dollars a week is going to pay off for you in ways that you cannot a fucking imagine. <laughs> All right, man, this was good. Wake the fuck up! It's time for a revolution of thought, and not about nose rings, okay? <laughs> <laughs> not about purple hair. Not about the way you dress or the music you listen to or the movies you watch wake up to the fact that we all need to band back together and vote vote as a as a unit and and take our power back man right yeah take our power back get rid of these i don't know how we get rid of them maybe we just integrate them maybe maybe we make them marry horses <laughs> 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 no, I think the way to get your power back or our power back is like, honestly, I think it's through like elections and through voting. Yeah, definitely. Like you look at like Kevin McCarthy here in, in Bakersfield, wow. like he's like, he's an incumbent like for a long time. Right. Yeah. But like, if you look at Kern County, if you look at Bakersfield, like it's not that red to the point of like don't get me wrong it's a very red county but if like enough people voted he could get unseated like any election i think I, he had like twenty thousand votes like the last election yeah and there's like half a million people in kern county really yeah oh so if you wake up the other four hundred eighty thousand, i agree how do we do it can I, I don't think you have to wake him up. I think you just have to, like, 
get enough people to vote, to like care enough to care about voting to the point where they actually do it. Okay. Well, if you come up with an idea how to do that, I, I'm totally in, man. Because <laughs> I'd like to see McCarthy gone. You become super rich, and then you just pay people to vote. Oh, okay. Okay. You don't have to tell them who to vote for. If you pay enough people to vote, chances are, if they're willing to take you up on your, like, hey, I'll give you $1,000 to vote, chances are they're, one, kind of poor, because, you know, that's, <laughs> like, enticing to them. And, I mean, it's enticing to most people. Right. But you take those $1,000 to, like, East Bakersfield, Kevin McCarthy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say anything just be like hey here's your here's your check here's your ballot vote as you will <laughs> and my name's right there <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, uh okay get super rich give people money become powerful okay i got it i got it. i wrote <laughs> i took notes right here and the first one is get super rich. So I'm going to start working on that this week. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds easy enough. All right, dude. Good podcast. <laughs> Wake the fuck up. Marry a horse. Okay. Stop being a bully. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Well, man, I am going to go to the store and feed the capitalism machine and do my thing. Have a week. <laughs> You too, man. All right. Later, dude. Later. You have now experienced the Thoroughly Wrong Project with your podcast hosts, Lalo and Bob. We can now be found on Pandora Radio, Apple Podcasts, Podium Podcast, or by searching The Thoroughly Wrong Project to locate our YouTube channel. You can contact us directly by email at thoroughlywrong at gmail.com or just leave a comment on any of our platforms. Until next time, thanks for spending your valuable time with us. And remember, always speak up and never be afraid to be thoroughly wrong.